Okay, what we have here <coughs> is an American receiver from about 1925. It's a, a Fried Iceman uh, model NR5 and it's, it should have five valves, five tubes. Um, in fact I've only got four in place at the moment and the, the arrangement is slightly strange in as much as the, the aerial com comes in here into the first stage this is the first RF, then to the second RF, and then to the detector. And it, uh, the detector's uh, anode circuit is this um, intervalve coupling transformer. And that feeds all the way along to the back end, to the front end again, to a couple of stages which are AF. But uh, unfortunately I've got some instability at the moment um, with this long run, so I'm leaving that one at the moment and uh, just taking the output directly from the detector. Anyway, I thought I would just show you how difficult it is actually to tune this thing with its three separate uh, RF stages. Okay, we now have some power supplies connected to it and we're feeding it into this BTH horn loudspeaker. Now in fairness, uh, the aerial actually isn't really very wonderful. It's um, just a piece of coax going up to an old rabbit's ears. And um, well, as you can hear, we're getting Radio Scotland, which is sort of mid-dial on the uh, about 810 uh, kilo, uh, kilohertz. Um, but if I off-tune any of these um, stages, uh, you can find it's actually very difficult to just to determine where they should be. So, you know, if I tune one, I don't have any noise whatsoever. Try another one, try another one. Okay, now we've got, I've got some markers on them, which helps me, but uh, without actually going through each stage and um, looking at uh, the peaking, it's actually incredibly difficult to, um, to find a station. Okay, we've now replaced the aerial with um, the output of a tracking generator, um, and we're looking at the last RF stage uh, on the receiver with this showing 100 kilohertz per division and the center scale is about 800 kilohertz. So we've got three peaks corresponding to each of the three tuned circuits and if I try tuning them, so I'll tune in the first one and you'll see that amplitudes are all fairly low um, whilst the other two are off tune. And uh, in fact, do I have a speaker connected? Um, yes, the speaker is still connected. So we'll try um, tuning into the centre. So there's one of them in the centre, and then we'll tune the other one in, and the last one, uh, this one here. So now, now we've tuned in and we can hear the the sweep passing through our tuned in frequency. And we could we could try another another frequency so we'll, we'll start again putting them all off and uh, we'll go and choose a frequency up here. So now move another one of the dials to bring it in. Okay we're, we're getting a response from the speaker there that's very good. And now bringing up the other one so we've got all three tuned in but to actually find these positions um, without some sort of visual indicator is exceedingly difficult. So I think you can see here that <coughs> we've got the all three tuners tuned off to different places with my little marker. And uh, if I try to tune in something, you know, it's um, that's me hitting hitting the marker. Well, nothing there. Okay, we have nothing there even when we tuned the second one in. So, bringing in the third one, well, we're, we're a little bit off on the first one. So it's quite a fine, fine tuning. So getting all three is just a bit tricky.